Recently, the Sony Mocopi has come to the US. This is really exciting. This is a device that can do a lot of things. It can record video or motion capture directly on a phone. It can give you legs in VR chat and it can connect directly into game engines for real-time motion capture, application building, and real-time animation. I'm Woody and I make content about game engines inside game engines. And I'm gonna show you how to do what I'm doing right now in Unreal Engine and also in Unity. Thanks to Sony for sponsoring this video. The process for getting started with the Mocopy is about the same as it always is. Start the app and put on the device. We'll connect like normal. You're gonna change things over from video mode to motion and you wanna make sure the save is turned in to send. Now go up to the three button menu at the top and go to settings. We're gonna to go to PC connection settings. Up here, you have your IP address, an outbound port, and an option between VRChat and Mocopy UDP. Make sure you choose Mocopy UDP because we're going to game engines instead of VRChat. Set your IP address. If you don't know your IP address for the device that you're trying to target, remember you're looking for the IP address of the device that you're going to. In my case, that means I will be streaming Mocopy data to my Windows PC. You can just open up command prompt and type in IP config, or you can find it in your network settings. For now, leave port 12351 and press OK. You should note that you absolutely have to be on the same network as the device that you're trying to stream to. For most people, that's gonna mean just making sure their phone and computer are on the same Wi-Fi. I'd highly recommend connecting your phone with ethernet, and if you need to use Wi-Fi, I'd recommend using a separate router. If you find that you get stuck or you can't connect, the Mokopi site has some really good troubleshooting documents. So for starters, let's go to the developer website. So we'll go to downloads, and here you can see all the different integrations. We're gonna grab the most recent version of the Unreal Engine plugin. Installing this is really simple. However, it doesn't run through the Unreal Engine Marketplace, so if you've never done this, just hang with me for a second. We're gonna extract all of these, and now we have a folder. Let's go to our PC, and then let's go to the C drive. We're gonna go to Program Files, then we'll go to Epic Games, and you can select which version of Unreal you wanna use. I'm gonna be using 5, but 5.1 and 5.2 are also supported. Double-click Engine, and find your plugins, and look, here's all your plugins. Remember that folder we extracted? I'm gonna grab this version for 5.0. I'm gonna look inside it and I'm gonna grab Mocopy I Live Link and I'm gonna copy it into the plugins. Now let's open Unreal Engine. Now I'm picking film and video. I like to use these templates because they have a lot of other plugins installed by default. Call this Mocopy and find a folder for it. And look, we have a new project. Let's update our project file and then we're being told that new plugins are available. If you don't get the little pop-up, you can go to Settings and click on Plugins. Now if we type in Mocopy, we should have access to them through LiveLink. We'll have to restart the engine, but that's not a big deal. And looks like we're good to go. Now you'll find Mocopy over in the LiveLink panel over here. If you don't have the LiveLink panel, I have it by default, you can go up to Windows and it's in Virtual Production. Or if you're having trouble finding anything, you can always just start typing it in and then it'll pop up. So we'll add a new source and we'll add a Mocopy Live Link source. We can click on it here. Here you can see we have a couple of different parameters we can edit, including the connection port. Make sure that it is 12351. Now we send the data. If you have your trackers working in the app and you're ready to send signal, press the green button. We should have a Mocopy Live Link entry right here with a little green dot, which means we're sending which is great, but where do we find our mocap? To do that, we're gonna to need to go into the engine folder and go look in our plugins. You might have to scroll a little bit, but you'll find Mocopy. You wanna click Mocopy Live Link Content. And then if you go right here to Mocopy Animation Blueprint and you click it, we have motion. I'm sitting down right now, which isn't like the most amazing way to use Mocopy, but you can see it is tracking my motion. So now if we wanna be able to use that, we're just gonna grab a Mocopy actor and drag it out here. If you're familiar with Unreal Engine, all the Mocopy actor is, is just an actor that has access to the skeletal mesh, a live link component, as well as that animation blueprint. You can see that it runs in editor, even when we're not running it yet. Now, how do we record motion? There's a really easy way to do this built into Unreal Engine. It's a really fantastic tool. Go back up to Windows, go to Cinematics, and grab Take Recorder. As always, you can also just type in Take Recorder. So all we gotta do, 
Let's add our milk copy actor in. There's some other settings that we might choose to mess with at another time, like reducing keys. For now, let's keep things simple and let's just record some mocap. We'll start by playing the scene. Then I'm gonna stand up here. I'm just gonna record myself standing here, making a broad gesture and laughing to myself. <laughs> and press stop when you're done. I'm gonna do a couple more takes. Now, where do we find our assets? All you gotta do is go to content, go to cinematics, takes, and here's the date that we filmed this on. Now, if we open this up, we should be able to find all of our scenes. These will open up as sequencer files. However, we probably don't want the sequencer files. We probably want the animation assets, which we can find just by going to the shot and then clicking on the animation. This is just a mannequin character, right? We're going to want to use something much better than this. Well, that's thankfully quite easy to do with Unreal Engine 5's new IK retargeting tool. What we need here is to be able to find our default mesh. So you can click on one in the scene. And I'm going to click on the Browse To button. You can also find it the old fashioned way using this file path. This should open our Mokopi mannequin. And you can see we actually already have an IK asset. So I'm going to open this up. We'll find that we already have a bunch of different chains as well as IK goals attached to them. This is really easy. It means Sony's done half the work for us. We're gonna need another mesh. Let's go back to our content folder, make a new folder, call it skeletal, right click and import an asset and bring in your skeletal mesh. Once we have your model, all you have to do is right click and find an IK rig. Click on that and then let's find your exact mesh. Call this woody rig and open it. Now I'm gonna add a bunch of bone chains. This is how the IK system works. They can define a parameter for how I want the character to be retargeted. So a good example is upper arms. Before I name them, it's really helpful if I can look at the other IK first. So I'm gonna go back to the Mokopi section and I'm just gonna open up this IK here and I'll use all of these names and that will help the whole process move faster. Let's start with the spine. This typically covers every spine bone before the neck. We'll add our left arm. Starting with the upper arm, making our way down to our hand. And it should look the same between all of these. So if you see the upper arm moving all the way down to the hand, that's kind of how you know. So you'll want to just find every chain and make sure it's getting copied over. Now let's do the IKs. The Mokopi rig uses a full body solver, so let's do the same thing full body IK, and let's make a bunch of points. So we can click on the hands, make a new IK goal, the other hand, make another new IK goal, same with the feet, and that should be pretty good. We'll set the exact bottom of the rig as the retarget root. You can see we need a root for our solver, so we can also set that here. However, I think we're gonna have a problem with this, so let's just do a first run. I'm gonna go to animation and I'm gonna make an IK retargeter. It's gonna ask me what I wanna make a retarget from. So I'm gonna type in the Mokopi and I'll call this Mokopi to Woody Rick. I'll save that and I'm gonna open it up. It's gonna ask for the target IK rig and now I can bring in my Woody rig. So these are right next to each other. When I double click, I should get some sort of matching situation here. You'll notice we got a couple of little issues and these are pretty easy to work out. Now let's take a look at the Unreal Mannequin. You can see that its pelvis is the retarget root and it's also the root of the full body solver. However, the beginning of the spine chain doesn't start at its root, it starts at spine 01. So I set my pelvis as the root and the root of my full body solver and then I set the beginning of my spine chain to spine 01. This is working much better now. When you go back to your asset browser, you can export selected animations, which will allow you to transfer them over to your other asset. Find your folder and press OK. And now when I go over here, I can find my newly published asset on my character. OK, great. But how do we do anything with real time motion capture tracking to characters in Unreal? This is actually pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to find our character, right click, 
we'll create a new animation blueprint. Call this ABP underscore OCAP receiver. Now what we can do with this is we can click it and we're gonna add a specific node here. Get retarget pose from mesh. We're gonna go ahead and just plug this in. And then let's grab our asset. I'm gonna use the Mocopi to Woody rig. Make sure the checkbox for use attached parent is checked. Compile and save. So far we've been in the animation graph. Let's switch over to using the event graph. We're gonna need to create a little bit of code. Let's get the event blueprint begin play. Our owner, I'm gonna get owning actor. And then I'm gonna type in attach actor to component. Get actor of class. We are gonna find our Mocopi actor. We're gonna drag this out and then I'm gonna get the skeletal mesh. If I scroll all the way to the bottom here and then I'll just plug it right into the parent and press compile. Now when we press play, we have two characters working perfectly in lockstep. But this is really weird, so all you have to do is just go to the Mocopi actor, click on it, and then open it up. Find the skeletal mesh. We're gonna we're gonna type in hidden in game. Let's check it. And now type in visibility. We want to make sure that we have always tick pose and refresh bones on. And now it's just us. If you've ever used Epic Games' Live Link face to connect to Unreal Engine, you can also do this on top of the Mocopi to be able to drive facial blend shapes. Live Link face works really similarly to Mocopi. You'll need another networked connection to your computer. You can add the Live Link pose in between the retarget node and the output node, but for now, we're just going to stick with the full body capture. So let's get started in Unity. For starters, open up Unity Hub. And the current version of Unity that's supported is 2020.3.33F1, according to the website. But I imagine this will open up soon. Personally, I've been able to get it working in 2021, so check the documentation before you start downloading stuff. All right, let's install a new editor. We go to the archive, we'll be able to find older versions of Unity. So we'll click on this. In this web page, you're gonna go to the 2020 section, and then we're gonna find 3.33, and I'm gonna download the Windows version. Though you're also able to do this on a Mac. I'm gonna click the Unity Hub button and this will open it right back up in Unity Hub. It will likely wanna install Visual Studio. If you don't have Visual Studio or you've never used Unity before, go ahead and install this. I just wanna make sure I have Windows build support turned on because that's the platform I'm gonna build for. Hit install and now we watch the paint dry. All right, now that it's installed, I'm gonna to go to projects and I'm gonna make a new project. I'm gonna call it Mo. Copy, sample, scene. Make sure that you have 3D core. I'm gonna create the project and let Unity set it up. Let's go ahead and import the asset package that we need. We go to Mocopy developer. From the front page, we can go to downloads and we can find the latest plugin. Here is 1.0.4, which just came out today. I'm gonna to download it. Let's go to our downloads folder and extract this. Now we have a regular folder and we can access the package through here. Back in Unity, we're gonna go to Assets and then we're gonna go to Import Package, Custom Package and find what we just downloaded. Gonna open the package and go ahead and hit Import. So take a look at what we just got. You'll have the Mocopi Receiver folder. You open this up, you can find the resources, runtime and sample folders. Inside Sample, you're gonna see Receiver Sample You'll have models and scenes. If we look through models, we will find our standard Mocopi stock avatar. And if we go to scenes, we will find a test scene where everything is already laid out for us. There we go. There's our test scene. Make sure that your simple receiver here, this little object here, is set to run on the port that we want. That should be 12351. And make sure that the avatar selected is this avatar, at least for the sample. And now if you've hooked everything up correctly, we should be able to see some action. If you have your trackers working in the app and you're ready to send signal, press the green button. Press play. And here we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, what if we wanted to put a different model in there? Well, we just import one. It's important to put it in the models folder underneath the receiver sample folder. 
Make sure you've got that. You can see the default one that's right here. And let's import a new asset. How about a handsome one? Now, I have my model here. However, it's not quite ready to go. There's one thing we need to do first. We need to click over here on the rig section and we need to change our type of animation from generic to humanoid. Now, this is really great. This is Unity's humanoid system. Let's go ahead and apply our settings. And then now we can configure the humanoid system. Basically, this is a retargeting system or just another way of understanding bone rotations across all characters. Let's go ahead and make sure that everything looks okay. For the most part, it's gonna guess based on what the names of your bones are. Mine are all Unreal Engine names, but that's okay. And uh, let's see here, chest. We could probably change this. I'm gonna change my chest bone, but I include a second spine bone. I'm gonna leave my upper chest blank. From the diagram, we can see that everything looks good. And now we can go press apply. We'll go back to our scene here. Now that we have another model, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the one that we already have. In fact, I'm gonna delete the entire Mokopi avatar pack here. I'm gonna drag our guy in, which is me. And I'm gonna add a component over to him. I'm gonna grab Mokopi avatar and I'm gonna put it here. This is great. Now, when I go back to our Mokopi simple receiver, it will tell me that my avatar is missing. However, if I click the little button over here, I have the option to add my character in. And now things should be working. Let's press play and see what happens. And you can see we have a character. Let's go ahead and move this camera closer to him. I'm gonna turn the sun around as well. Great, let's do a build. Let's go to our build settings and change a few things. Now I'm building for Windows. So I'm gonna go to the player settings. Here's a handy little guide that I got from the Mokopi website that will show us what we need to change right now. For Windows, we only have to change two things here. We're gonna find our scripting backend. We're gonna change it from mono to IL2CPP. And I'm gonna take our API compatibility and make sure it's on the latest version on the site. They're recommending 4X, but for some reason I only have 2.1, so we'll go with that. All right, you can close this out now. And let's build and run the program. It's going to ask us for a place to put our build. The editor will prompt you to save if you haven't already. So let's go ahead and save. And we'll let it cook. And that's it. There we go. Look, here I am.